Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Piano Day is coming up. It's uh, this coming Thursday, the 88th day of the year. It's an artificial holiday, but as a pianist, it's one I celebrate. I'm not exactly on the porch, but this is a porch talk. So I'm a pianist, I'm a keyboard player, and I've been playing piano since I was 12 or 13, which is kind of a late starter for someone who's, you know, basically a professional pianist, a composer and teacher. And I have some thoughts about the piano and they're not all positive. And here's the thing about the piano. It doesn't really align with my philosophy of music. And it's because the piano is a reductive graphic experience, right? In front of you are these segments of the octave, 12 equal divisions, pretty artificial. And on top of that, you've got a keyboard layout, a sort of a layout of buttons, if you will, whose um, logic is skewed toward the European classical system. And even then, um, not even very well skewed towards that same system. And it's a, it's a legacy instrument, right? The keyboard itself, as we deal with it, has hundreds of years of history, and it's just because the way we do it that we continue to do it that way. This does not align with how I really experience sound and music. As keyboard players and as creative artists, we've got to train ourselves past that layout. So a lot of the things you've seen on my channel Focus on the experience of playing as a way of loosening up around those constraints. I feel like what we ought to think about is not chords, scales, shapes, but rather what I call a terrain. And we make choices about the terrain that we're active in as creative musicians. Now, it, it may not be uh, so important for you if you're a four chord songwriter or if you simply want to reproduce um, written music. You just kind of do what's expected and kind of what's laid out ahead of time. But for a creative musician like me and maybe like you, the, the expectations that the actual physical keyboard puts on us can be a box that maybe we don't want to be in. So when I say terrain, it encompasses a fairly broad experience of the piano keyboard. Now, you could look on it as a scale, perhaps, right? A series of white and black keys that creates a kind of a bumpy layout that my hands have to deal with. Perhaps a terrain is um, a series of divisions in time regular or irregular pulses that create a map over the ribbon of experience that allows us to place events within that series. Terrain is a broad notion. And so when I sit down to compose, the first thing I ask myself is kind of like a painter, especially the abstract expressionists, they influence me a lot. The first thing I ask myself is what's the field of action? in which I'm going to be engaged. What's the terrain? What's the layout of time? What's the layout of pitch and timbre? Will I be up here? Will I be down here? All those kinds of things are very general, almost scientific, bordering on academic, and they have nothing to do with conventional music theory tropes, right? Now, if I'm a piano player, I then have to engage with that interface. And Piano Day always brings this up for me because I've got a love-hate relationship with the instrument. It's just part of the world that we're in, right? And I guess I just have to accept it and move forward. I wanna talk about a couple more things because I recently ran across the word qualia. It sounds like the word quality, right? or qualified. So 
The subjective experience of a thing, an event, a color, gives us a, a strong sensation that's internal. And the qualia of an experience is that packet of information that's, you know, integral and intrinsic to that color, that sound, that moment in time. It's tremendously subjective. And as an artist, your job, my job, is to really try to get as much of that as possible and then find a way to communicate it. Now, that's not an easy thing to do because I don't know what the qualia of red is for a given audience member. And that may seem like a sophomoric argument in a way, but I think it goes directly to that first issue that, that I was talking about because if I engage with my piano keyboard or my synthesizers in a way that has some detachment from the conventional language and thinking of the instrument itself, I'm more likely to work a little bit harder to get at the truth of my own qualia. And the truth of my own experience, my own subjective focused reality has to inform my action. And I really do believe this for myself, that if I work hard at that, it's going to get out to my audience, get out to my listeners, get out to the people who are appreciating my music in a way that's maybe a little bit truer, that's more honest, that's more direct than um, if I simply engage with a set of rules bounded by the constraints of the instrument. Are you following me? I think this is true. My teacher was Dr. Roland Wiggins, and he taught that each creative artist begins kind of at a center location when they're a young student or even a very young person beginning. And gradually as they grow, they expand their taste, they expand their capabilities, they expand their kinesthetic abilities, right? They expand their musical syntax, all the um, musical phrases, harmonies, the sort of language of their musical expression, and they expand their semantics, the meaning of what they're doing, kinesthetics, syntax, semantics. They become more and more themselves. And as they become more and more themselves, they move away from that center location. As I've gotten older, I've certainly moved further and further away from those conventional, that conventional center. So imagine, if you will, a bunch of young musicians. And I had this experience, certainly with myself, all my young musician friends from when I was in my teens and 20s. We've all developed and we continue to develop. And as we've developed, we've f moved further and further away from each other artistically. We can still meet and, and you know, find something together. We came from the same place, but we're really far out now. Imagine the expanding universe. The sense that everything is moving away from itself so that eventually you wind up with a huge world, a giant constellation of possibilities represented by individual artists doing something that's directly their own, that's, um, that's, just, that's just theirs, that comes directly out of the qualia of experience of things that's theirs. Now, we can come together to do things, but I just think that that's a wonderful image. The, the big change in cosmological thinking came when Edmund Hubble discovered that everything we can see up there in the galactic sky is moving away from us. Things that are closer are, are moving away from us a little bit slower. That's me and my buddy David. Things that are further away from us are moving faster and faster. That's me and Amy. And the further away they are, the faster they're moving. I think the same is true of us as we develop as artists. Going back to what Wiggins said, he said, you must become your own theorist. You've got to discover that thing in yourself that is essentially and 
irreducibly yours. Maybe you can find it quickly. Maybe it'll take you a long time. It's taken me a long time. I can, I'm happily a late bloomer. But once that thing is located, building outwards on top of it becomes your job. And I think it's an important job to do. The world has a very deep thirst for that specific thing that you've got. And, and that, that need nurtures not just you, because of course you're going to feel so much better if you're yourself, but everyone around you. You're actually supporting the whole world by being most specifically yourself. Well, kind of that's my hope for you, and that's my hope for this channel. I hope this is music theory for everyone without creating boxes. Without creating boxes. Yeah. Well, what's really so for you? I guess that's a really important question. I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time.